in the modern day of NASCAR, there are those drivers that don't get enough credit for the things they do in their respective rides. But, on the other side of things, there are those drivers that consistently underperform and get more credit than they perhaps deserve. So today, we're going to take a look at five NASCAR drivers that are potentially underrated and five that are overrated. Now let me start by saying, being overrated doesn't mean someone sucks or someone's a bad driver. It just means that they get more credit than they might deserve. Underrated, Eric Jones. Eric Jones has been in the Cup Series since 2017. He started his career with Furniture Row Racing in the second car of the 77. His rookie season was solid, but in 2018, he was brought to the main Toyota team, Joe Gibbs Racing. In his 2018 and 2019 seasons, he put up solid results. Between the two seasons, he recorded two wins, 19 top fives, 35 top tens, led 271 laps, and made the playoffs both seasons, and both ended in round of 16 exits. In 2020, he had a down year and missed the playoffs, and because of this, he was let go from JGR in favor of Christopher Bell. In 2021, he signed with Richard Petty Motorsports and had an okay season. In 2022, he and the newly rebranded Petty GMS had a breakout year almost making the playoffs and won the playoff opener at Darlington. In 2023, his team was atrocious, but the lone bright spot was Jones. Jones was running well a lot of the time and putting that car in the top 10 and running where that car simply didn't belong. And in 2024, before his entry, he was on that playoff bubble and in contention for a playoff spot. Overrated, Daniel Suarez. Daniel Suarez has been in the Cup Series for almost eight seasons now and has recorded two wins. Suarez has driven for top teams in the Cup Series for the majority of his career and has done next to nothing with it. In his two seasons with JGR, he didn't make the playoffs and only recorded four top fives. In 2019, he moved to SHR. Not the SHR from now, but back when they were a top team. He missed the playoffs and was once again dropped. In 2021, he was picked up by a newly formed track house, and since then, he has been consistently beat out by his teammate and has recorded two wins, while his teammate has recorded four. Suarez has been an afterthought for his entire cup career, and I wouldn't be surprised if Justin Marks decides to let him go after 2024. Underrated, Taylor Gray. Taylor Gray in the truck series has been phenomenal this season. In nine races, he has recorded seven top tens and currently sits fifth in points. Gray has also made select starts in the Xfinity series and in those starts has shown some true promise. Taylor is also run outrunning his older veteran brother, Tanner Gray. Taylor has been really consistent and is almost right there with his teammate and the best driver in the truck series right now, Corey Heim. But the weird thing is, is that nobody is talking about this. Overrated, Austin Centric. Austin Cendrick started his cup career with a bang. He won the Daytona 500 in his rookie season, and after that, he ran solidly in the top 15 to 20 range, and later that season, in the playoffs, almost made the round of eight. In 2022, Cendrick finished the season 12th in points. Not bad for a rookie season, and maybe he could build off of this for his 2023 season. But 2023 was nothing short of a disaster. Cendrick regressed big time. He was nowhere close to playoff contention and had one top five all season long in Penske equipment and finished the season 24th in points. And so far, 2024 is not looking good. Cindric only has one top 10 as of this recording after Darlington. Outside of that top 10, he only has two more top 20s and currently sits 24th in points. Cindric has not done anything in the Cup Series and honestly, you gotta think, that if his dad, Tim Sendrick, didn't have a high position within Penske, he probably wouldn't have a seat. Underrated, Justin Haley. Haley hasn't been the flashiest driver, but he has been solid and he stays out of trouble. In his time in Xfinity, Justin Haley was a championship contender almost every season and a borderline top five driver in the series. In 2022, he was promoted to the Cup Series with colleagues' new Cup team. In 2022, he was solid and had four top tens along with a 22nd place points finish. In 2023, Haley put up some more of the same numbers, but the performance that stood out the most was at the Chicago Street Course, where he held off road course king Chase Elliott for almost 25 laps, but ultimately lost to Shane Van Gisbergen on new tires. 
Haley slightly improved, but in 2024, he would move to Rick Ware Racing. So far though, despite driving for a borderline backmarker team, Haley has had standout performances. He was running top 20 at Coda before he was DQ'd, finished top 20 at Bristol, and was in the mix at Talladega before getting wrecked. And right now is riding a two race top 20 streak with a fantastic ninth place finish at Darlington. Haley is doing more with Rick Ware than anyone else could, and I think going forward, this will be an outstanding partnership. Overrated, Sheldon Creed. I'm gonna be honest, I find myself getting fed up with Creed. Now sure, he is a former Truck Series champion, but that has not translated to the Xfinity Series at all. In 2022, Creed missed the playoffs while his teammate Austin Hill won two races and made the round of eight. In 2023, Creed made the playoffs but didn't win a race and cost himself as well as his teammate a shot at the title. And honestly, a lot of you are probably going to be upset with this, but Creed deserved every little bit of backlash he got at Martinsville. And I don't blame Richard Childress or Andy Petrie for being upset at Creed. And no, I do not think Austin Hill is totally innocent either. Anyway, in 2024, Creed would go to JGR and so far in 2024, Creed still hasn't won a race. And what makes this even worse is that the driver that took over his old ride at RCR just won a race in that same ride. My final opinion on Creed is that he is headed toward the bust category. Underrated, Parker Kligerman. Parker Kligerman has made the most out of all those lower tier rides in the lower series for so long. In the truck series, Kligerman has won twice in that 75 truck at Talladega and also won a race in 2022 at Mid-Ohio beating out that year's champion, Zane Smith. Because of all these accolades, he was rewarded with a full-time Xfinity Series ride in 2023 with Big Machine Racing. BMR was a top 10 team and Kligerman with the team was massively successful. He wasn't able to win a race, but he was really consistent and made the playoffs. Kligerman ended up being a round of 12 exit, but this team showed some true promise. Kligerman is finally with a solid full-time team and he deserves it after being one of the most underrated drivers and making the most out of those lower tier rides. Overrated, Bubba Wallace. Bubba Wallace has been a decent driver in the Cup Series, but has not been elite like some think. Let's take it back to 2015 and 2016. In those two seasons, Bubba was a non-factor in both seasons and was consistently outperformed by his teammates. While Bubba was running between 9th and 20th every week, his teammate Chris Buescher won the championship. And in 2016, he was outperformed by Ryan Reed. In his cup career, he started with Petty in the 43 car. Now he had some standout performances here and there, but in the 2018 and 19 seasons, he finished 28th in points. Which was disappointing considering the fact that Eric Almarola proved that team to be a top 15 to 20 team consistently. In 2020, Bubba improved considerably, but really nothing big to note. In 2021, he would get the opportunity of a lifetime, with 2311 and was basically what Furniture Row was. In that season, he recorded a rain-shortened super speedway win, but outside of that, only had two other top 10s all year. In the next-gen era, Bubba has been outdone by both teammates Tyler Reddick and Kurt Busch. While winning a race in 2022 and making the playoffs in 2023, he really didn't have anything else to ride home about. So far in 2024, Bubba has been just meh. He is 16th in points and right now his performance is disappointing, especially considering that his teammate Tyler Reddick is 6th in points and competing for wins almost every single week. Underrated, Alex Bowman. Alex Bowman is a driver that is just massively overhated. Now is Bowman the best driver ever? No. Is he the fourth best driver on his team? Yes. But there is nothing wrong with that, especially when there's three generational talents on the team with two cup champions, Larson and Elliott, and a former Xfinity champion, William Byron. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that Bowman is elite or anything like that, but since joining HMS, he has been solid. Bowman from 2018 to 2022 made the playoffs every year and got as far as the round of eight. Also, Bowman won a race every year from 2019 to 2022, including four wins in 2021. In 2023, Bowman had a down year, but having a back injury is definitely a factor. But in 2024, Bowman seems like he's doing better. 13 races into the season, he has four top fives and eight top tens and is ninth in points. And yet, people still want to crap on him. 
Bowman is a decent driver who just happens to be the fourth best driver on his team, and because of that, he will never get the credit that he deserves. Overrated Todd Gilliland. Now what I don't understand is all the hype around Todd. His rookie season in 2022, he had two top 10s along with a 23rd place average finish and a 28th place points finish. Now nothing to be ashamed of for a rookie year with a mid-pack team. In 2023, Gilliland showed very little improvement. His average finish improved slightly from 23.1 to 22.5. The thing that everyone hangs on to is his 6 race stretch where he finished 15th at Atlanta, 10th at Coda, 15th at Richmond, 8th at Bristol Dirt, 25th at Martinsville after a mechanical issue, but before that he was running inside the top 15, and a 10th at Talladega. Everybody hyped this up and said that Gillen was starting to show potential, which I will admit he was. But after this stretch, he only recorded 4 more top 20 finishes in the final 26 races, and he still finished 28th in points, which was a disappointing ending to the season. But you might be asking about 2024. In 2024, Gilland in 13 races has a 22.9 average finish, which is almost identical to 2023, and only has 4 top 20s so far. So that'll do it for today guys, thanks for watching, and drop a comment whether you agree or disagree. Like us, like and subscribe and I will see you next time for another video.